Beba yako, beba yako. Beba yako. Oh. Hey, beba yako. Leo ni sisi tunakupatia. And I took some condoms to sex workers and they were elderly women and they told me bullshit. Mm -hmm. We have been in this business more than you. They started calling one another, hey, James, you what? Come and see this fool. And one challenge they gave me that. If that condom really protect people from HIV, I demonstrate to them real and they see me having sex with one of them who is HIV positive. And if I don't get HIV, they're going to accept the condom. What? Yes. Uh -huh. And it was not easy. And it was not a polite way. Uh -huh. They surrounded me and they said, I must use condom with one of them to prove that that condom works. Mm -hmm. I'm interested. What did you do? Wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you, uh, uh, wisdom, wisdom come from heaven. Uh -huh. I panicked. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. They were smoking bang. They were others were naked. You know they don't. They were they they, they put mm -hmm. very suggestively. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I panicked. I didn't know what to do. And then I told them, Ah, this is very easy. Mm -hmm. Yes, let the doctor use ah, his medicine. <laughs> I will use to, with everybody who is sitting here. Uh. I will. I gave them confidence. But one thing that I want us to know. I want to know your status and you know my status. And then after using condom, you are going to see the results. Uh -huh. Yes. They said it's okay. Told them, let's go to my office for a HIV test. They refused to get into the car. So I was lucky. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I remember there's a time I, I, I was confronted by a pastor mm -hmm. in, in uh, Abbasanda. I was giving people condom and that guy called me. Then I thought I was so happy he, he, he needs condom. Then he the pastor? Yes, then uh. he told me straight. He, he did have the... I didn't know he was a pastor. Uh -huh. So he was on casual. Then he <sighs> told me straight on my face, you are a devil agent. Why are you giving people condom? Why are you encouraging people sex? I was like, if you carry an umbrella and it's not raining, <laughs> <laughs> is it a mistake? <laughs> are you a legend of the devil? <laughs> With Africa being the leading continent in matters HIV cases reported per day, it has given birth to its new son dubbed the King of Condoms. <laughs> Join me in today's episode of my story. And this is his story. Unpack and I carry my condoms. Naenda, when I stop my car, I make sure that uh, people can access condom even when I'm away. Yes. Sasa waja nikupatie moja, niene nikapatie wengine pia, wana nikojea, beba hiyo moja. Sinipua? Na uvae mask, na uvae. Shika, shika mask, hata mask nda kupatia, vii yota ni mpia. Hapana, niliweka tu hapo, vaa vaa mask bana. Sasa kujeni, sasa, lakini sika toi, mambo, munaenda wapi? Mtoka shude. Mambo. Mkwaji. Yay. I tall girl. <laughs> the tallest of all. Mko sawa? Tulisemaji. Watu abstain. Wapate maskil sawa. Sindio? Mujibjenge kwanza. Sindio? My brother, how are you? I'm very fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. I've longed to have this sit down. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is what I love. Mm -hmm. I love people when people love me. You are, you are hard <laughs> bad to catch. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. uh, welcome to the King's Palace. This is where the king who serve people mm -hmm. live. Exactly. And I'm happy to invite you for a day with me. Uh -huh. Yes. Who said I'll not dine with kings? Oh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, have a day with the king today from morning. Mm -hmm. We see. Exactly. Yes. So basically, let's, uh, let's, let's take off. 
I'd like people to know you. Yes, by your your names. Yes. Personally, I know you as the king of condoms. The only one in Africa. You you you, you should add that. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> the only one in Africa. Africa. Yes, uh -huh. yes. So I just want them to know your official names. Yes. Uh, what you do. Yes. Exactly. My name is Stan Ringara. Mm -hmm. uh, the king Afri of Africa. The king of condom. The only one in Africa. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I serve the community. I'm the only king who serves the community. Other kings are served. <laughs> but I serve the community. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm proud of myself mm -hmm. and I love my work. Exactly. Yes. Where is the king born? Uh, king was, I've been brought up here in Thika. Mm -hmm. This is my home. I went to school in primary school here in Thika. Mm -hmm. My secondary part in Thika in Muranga. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have lived a lot of most of my time in my life I have spent in Thika. Mm -hmm. Then uh, for the last 20 years, I went to Nairobi mm -hmm. when I started this campaign seriously. So I have lived in part of uh, Nairobi, worked in Harigam, mm -hmm. and I have toured all parts of Nairobi, all parts of Kenya through this exactly. initiative. Uh -huh. Yes. How was your life growing up? Uh, like any other person with the street fight. <laughs> <laughs> you are a fighter yourself? Yes, yes, yes. I was doing boxing, you know. Mm -hmm. I started, um, I was doing boxing with the army, the KDF, that is Afaba Boxing Club. Mm -hmm. Then I started a small uh, youth group with Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And I attracted a lot of young people to do charity. Mm -hmm. to do community service, washing the hospital, visiting the... We have uh, disability institutions here, mm -hmm. school for the bride, Joy Town for the disabled. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of charity mm -hmm. in those places, helping the slum, responding to fire, mm -hmm. accident, and also responding to HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're just made of charity. Yes, I think my passion, one of the best thing is that when you know where you are born, you know your purpose in this life. You enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yes. You take it and run with it. Yes, because I, ha I have never done any other business. I don't know business. Uh, what I know is helping people. Exactly. Yes. Wow. You have siblings? I have a brother and sister. I have one brother, one sister. Uh -huh. My brother is my sister is a teacher. My brother is employed somewhere in Nairobi as a driver. Uh -huh. Yes. Your parents? I have, uh, I'm, 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 I'm from a single mother mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of my mother mm -hmm. because for once she have really accepted my job. Uh, she even called herself Mama King of Condom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also talk about condom with her and uh, I, I also tell her my experience and what I've gone through <laughs> and I really respect her uh -huh. because it was not for her, I couldn't be the king of condom today. You she have really supported me. You wouldn't be held in the Yes, world. I couldn't. Uh -huh. It is through her. Mm -hmm. Yes. Basically, when does your campaign start? Or rather, basically, what you do? Where does it start from? Here. I can say here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I start from home. But it is not an everyday activity. But it depends with the situation. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance... Uh, there will be come up an activity, a big activity. Mm -hmm. I will respond to that. But every day in my car, I must have condoms. Mm -hmm. And I must have my uniform in oh. the car. And I put it every day. Uh -huh. And I'm very proud because this is the uniform I put from Monday to Saturday. I don't, own, I don't put it on Sunday. Why so? <laughs> no, Sunday is my, <laughs> my church day. Uh -huh. uh, my, my wife is an evangelist and uh, I really like supporting her. We mm -hmm. go to church every Sunday, and uh, Sunday I don't give out condom. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a but church day. You just relax. I like relax with my family. Mm -hmm. and I go to church. Mm -hmm. Yes. When is the first time, if you can remember, mm -hmm. that uh, you start doing this? I'm particularly interested with what drove you down that direction. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember I was very young mm -hmm. and also active and in, in relationship. Like any other young man. <laughs> uh -huh. You're and still active. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still, but I think I was more active then. <laughs> uh -huh. And um, during that time, 
uh, there was this scenario that when somebody dies, a list of shame was distributed. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's a lady who died. Mm -hmm. We were very close with that lady. And rumors started that she died of HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. And the list of people that she engaged with was was written. Was written. Uh -huh. And I found my name was there. What? And that was a long time. I was talking about between 1995 and 1998 there. Uh -huh. And uh, God knows, uh -huh. I didn't have any uh, sexual relationship with that lady. But my name was there. Uh -huh. And I couldn't tell people. So people accused you of uh, people, being HIV positive. There are people even today who believe that I'm HIV positive because of the stories back then. Back then. Uh -huh. And uh, I tried to donate blood. You know, you donate blood to see, to get your results. By then there was, there was no HIV testing. Mm -hmm. 1995, 1998. The first testing was done in 2000, 2001 for free quick, rapid HIV testing. Uh -huh. So by then, you could only go to Kenyatta Hospital, you are tested, and you wait for your results, and your results will come through post office. Mm -hmm. And the counseling, there were no setup of those uh, counseling and testing institutions by then. Mm -hmm. So I, I was really stigmatized, I can say. Uh -huh. It was a challenge. And uh, I've buried a lot of my friends who died then of HIV. People I know, people used to relate with. Their family members even today, maybe they don't know or they know mm -hmm. that they died of HIV. Mm -hmm. But I can say HIV in 1990s and 2000, mm -hmm. it really hit uh, people of our age. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yes. So on this particular moment, mm -hmm. when you realize that you're in the, the so-called list of shame, yes, how do you handle it? Do people run away from you? I can imagine those days. I think it was uh, one of the difficult times that I faced because when you, you are seen with a person, that mm -hmm. person is told about you. Mm -hmm. Hey, that guy, take care of that guy, you know. Mm -hmm. Watch out, that guy is not straight. Mm -hmm. Take care of that guy. Do you find yourself alone for some time? before okay i'm i'm a, I'm a social guy mm -hmm. so I, it didn't bother me i didn't feel the I, I i didn't feel it really but maybe i would go to somebody maybe i'm having a relationship with somebody and that person will withdraw but i would like hey what's up then later she will tell you i was told uh -huh. and that relationship is cut uh -huh. <laughs> then you start another one <laughs> Cut, you start another one. That was life. <laughs> how many were they? <laughs> you, it's try and error, you know. You depend on how... Then By then, the population was very small. Mm -hmm. And Thika is a very small town. People know one another, to mm -hmm. be sincere. Mm -hmm. So, when, when I started realizing I'm not the only person who is going through this, a lot of people, I found that this is not true. These people don't know me. These are just assumptions because I, I, I relate with a lot of young people. And the best thing is to start giving out condom and educating people about condom. Mm -hmm. So I remember I started working very closely with people like uh, Asumta mm -hmm. when Asumta was starting. Mm -hmm. Because now I was in the group, the aid control uh, group. Mm -hmm. Now people could not understand how am I in this group that is working to stop HIV and the only people who are doing HIV work are positive. Uh -huh. And then here I am. Am I positive? No. Because I'm working with these people. Uh -huh. And so majority of people... But you are, you are positively working with them. I'm positively working <laughs> with them. But <laughs> my status, nobody knows my status even today. Mm -hmm. My status is private and confidential. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I should not talk about my status to anybody. Unless we go for a HIV test. I know your status. You know my status. Then we start moving on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So you continue working with these groups? So even today, I work with people in HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work with sex workers. Uh -huh. I work with young men. I work in workplaces. I, I'm, I'm, I have visited a lot of uh, companies and institutions to talk about sex at workplace. Because there is a lot of 
sex at workplace. And uh, I install a lot of condom dispensers and supply condoms mm -hmm. to, to, to companies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes, yes. What do you look at when you're targeting specific people or specific organizations or maybe? I, I have one dream mm -hmm. that uh, because I'm also a parent, I'm a father, mm -hmm. I would like to, that this coming generation will be free from HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a world free from HIV AIDS. I'm not judgmental. I don't judge people. I, if I give you condom, I don't want to know what you're going to do with it. Either you are taking it to somebody, all it is yours, all you are going to use. As far as you take it positively and I educate you. Mm -hmm. I use what we call 3D approach. First we discuss, why am I giving you condom? What is the purpose of condom? What is sex? What do you understand of sex? We do, the first D is we discuss. Mm -hmm. Why should you use condom? To prevent yourself from HIV, unintended pregnancy and STIs. We discuss, are you at risk? When is the last time you had unprotected sex as a person? Did you know the status of that person you had sex with? This, that's the discussion. Then I demonstrate how to use condom. Then I distribute condom. So I don't just give people condoms like hard mm -hmm. No. I, we sit down, we discuss. Mm -hmm. There's that training. We discuss about the common STIs that we have. And we have a lot of uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases that People don't know, like genital arts, which is very, very severe. And nowadays in Kenya, we have a lot of those STIs are coming back. We discuss about STI. We discuss about abortions. If you don't use condom, like the cost of condom is three shillings. The government give us three shillings each. When you, you're given one condom, the government give you three shillings. So if you have three, you have nine shillings from the government. That is the cost of condom. But the cost of abortion is like 10,000 a plus. And per year in Kenya, we have more than 500,000 abortions. Mm -hmm. So if we use condom, we can save those abortions. And there are people who die out of abortions every year. Young, beautiful girls die out of abortions because of not using condom. You know, we cannot sit and wait for people to die because they're not using condom. Mambo, Mkwaji. Yay! I tall girl. <laughs> the tallest of all. Muko sawa? Tulisemaji? Watu abstain. Wapate? Maskil sawa. Sindio? Mujibjenge kwanza. Sindio? Munenda wapi sasa? Munenda home? Ishara. Ndaka mtu. And you see, the big thing is, feeling sex is normal. Even now, as we are talking here with you, my friend, somebody somewhere is having sex and is normal and is okay. <laughs> I'm glad it's not us. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if we accept to talk about sex, mm -hmm. we educate. You know, Africa, it is a taboo to talk about sex. I read about sex. All these books are about sex. What? Yes. I have a lot All of All this books. collection? Yes. Uh -huh. I, every month I buy a book about sex and I read. I need to understand. What is this small thing that takes maybe five minutes, ten minutes and can change your life? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. It will change your life. You will turn positive. You will be taking medication every day because of an activity of 20 minutes and not using a small tool of three shillings. If we connect condom as a safety tool, the way we take gum boots, umbrella, safety belt, gloves, and we put condom there, it will be very easy mm -hmm. that we don't need to hide condoms. Initially, I used to give people condom and they could, they could not pick direct. They could hide. It's like drugs. Having condom is like drugs. I remember one time when I was a bachelor, I, ha I left some condoms in my pocket by mistake. Mm -hmm. There was a lady who was uh, washing clothes for me. Then when she was washing the, the trousers, she found condom. She stopped washing my clothes. She removed the condom and it was not used. She removed the condom, put it in front of my door and my trousers and left without washing the, mm -hmm. the clothes. I was like, Jesus Christ. Then the following morning she came, started quarreling me with, why did you leave condom? I was like, Jesus Christ. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I have I have gone through a lot with with condoms and uh, that's why I have passion with condoms. Mm-hmm. Yes. What has been your experience with uh, sex workers? I have a lot of experience with sex workers because uh, uh, to be sincere with the government data, they do an, an estimate of sex workers. In Nairobi, we have more than 180,000 sex workers. What? Yes. Uh-huh. That's, let's talk about Nairobi. We have a lot of sex workers. Uh-huh. And uh, one thing I like, every sex worker will get a business every day. So we, we have a lot of men who buy sex. <laughs> Uh-huh. from sex workers because they cannot be in business if they are not getting uh, they are not servicing people uh-huh. so I have, I have I have worked with them for a long time and I remember my first time I engaged myself with sex workers in Nairobi it was terrible I, it was on a, around 6 8 hotel there and I took some condoms to sex workers and they were elderly women and they told me bullshit mm-hmm. we have been in this business more than you they started calling one another hey james you what come and see this fool and one challenge they gave me that if that condom really protect people from hiv i demonstrate to them real and they see me having sex with one of them who is HIV positive. And if I don't get HIV, they're going to accept the condom. What? Yes. Uh-huh. And it was not easy. And it was not a polite way. Uh-huh. They surrounded me and they said, I must use condom with one of them to prove that that condom works. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. What did you do? What? Wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you, uh, uh, wisdom, wisdom come from heaven. Uh-huh. I panicked. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do. They were smoking bang. They were others were naked. You know they don't. They were they they, they put mm-hmm. very suggestively. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I panicked. I didn't know what to do. And then I told them, Ah, this is very easy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Let the doctor use ah, his medicine. <laughs> I will use to with everybody who is sitting here. Uh-huh. I will. I give them confidence. But one thing that I want us to know, I want to know your status and you know my status. And then after using condom, you are going to see the results. Uh-huh. Yes. They said it's okay. Told them, let's go to my office for a HIV test. They refused to get it back. So I was lucky. I didn't know <laughs> what to do. <laughs> but it, it was crazy. Uh-huh. So... To, to be to be sincere, mm-hmm. uh, there's what we call trust building process with the sex workers. Mm-hmm. They have trusted me because I have been with them for all the time. I have taken condoms <laughs> to all sex workers in every corner of the city mm-hmm. and also part of our country. I have supported them when they are arrested. I talk to the police. Sometimes they are released. There are organizations that like LVCT who do HIV testing for sex workers and also clinical. I have supported them to go there to be tested and to get medication. Mm-hmm. I can say we have a good relationship with them. I can say if, if I would like to join uh, politics and become an MCA, I'm sure I can get enough votes from that area. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, that one I can guarantee you. Wow. But <laughs> I'm not a politician. <laughs> they cannot do uh-huh. politics. Exactly. Yes. So probably when uh, when you look at uh, the kind of things they do, mm-hmm. one may ask, are we doing the right thing by preventing them from getting HIV, maybe the sex workers, as opposed to getting them out of this uh, vice? Me have no any problem, my brother, with sex workers. Mm-hmm. If you re- if you read the Bible, the best one of the best uh, friend of Jesus Christ, Mary Magdalene, was a sex worker. Ruth and other people, and I think in the Bible, there are about three four women who have been mentioned in the Bible mm-hmm. who are sex workers. Mm-hmm. So sex work is uh, one of the oldest thread that is known. Mm-hmm. How people do it, business is different Mm -hmm. because it put them at risk of HIV, STIs, drugs, criminal activities, and many more. Mm -hmm. And now our intervention is not because they are sex workers. Our intervention, all my intervention is because 
sex workers drive HIV. They are one of the main drivers of HIV. Mm-hmm. Because generally, if, if one sex worker will have business with like 10 men in a day, if they don't use protection, those 10 men will be infected with HIV and STS. And they will go and infect their wives back at home. All mm-hmm. the other partners they have. Mm-hmm. So we can really spread HIV if we ignore sex workers in this country. Mm-hmm. If we harass them, they are very important. Because one, they make those men happy. Those men who go there, they go because they have a purpose. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate them. But if those men can solve their problems with their partners and they can look other better options, and also we look better options for the sex workers in business and the economy, we can be having a very good country. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. So you've been to every corner of this country? Oh, my friend. Yes. Uh-huh. Apart from the northeastern Mandera and other places, uh-huh. these other places from Lamu, Kisumu, Kitui, I have visited. I'm mm-hmm. very proud that this job have made me go places. Uh-huh. Yes. Collectively, when you look at the, the kind of supplies you've made, mm-hmm. around how many have you supplied? I cannot be able to count uh-huh. because uh, it is not a, a mass that I give you a condom personally. But maybe if I talk to you, you can go look for a condom or buy a condom. Uh-huh. If not, give you a free condom. Because I started hyping up this condom basically very well from... Uh, 2014 mm-hmm. December remember mm-hmm. uh, I was doing a talk in uh, in uh, KU University and uh, keep on talking to new freshers we call them freshers uh, mm-hmm. with the peer educators they made a crown for me and they called me the king but they didn't say king of condom they just say king then oh I added of condom Ah. Then I started designing my attire. Uh-huh. I started going out as a king of condom. That's where your name came from. Yes. Uh-huh. So I really appreciate the KU student because uh, I graduated with my own honor of <laughs> king of condom uh-huh. from there. Uh-huh. And uh, I can say I have hyped even the demand of condoms countrywide mm-hmm. through the support of uh, NASCOP and National AIDS Control Council that now condom have reached to every area of this country mm-hmm. and people can talk freely about condom mm-hmm. initially it was difficult but i can tell you even when i walk in the street people want to have selfies with me they want to say hi if i check on my facebook or my instagram i have a lot of likes and it is not easy it's a journey i mm-hmm. can say it's a journey <laughs> By 2014, if you can check, the the government was buying like a hundred million condoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now it have gone to almost double to 208 or 400. The the the, the demand is very high. Uh-huh. Yes. Exactly, but what you're doing is you're touching lives. Oh yeah, touching lives one by one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I feel even if I give one person one condom one day, I'm happy because that person who is coming for condom from me knows where he's going, who he's going with, and he's, he's not sure about the status of that person where he's going for. Uh-huh. So when I give somebody condom, I feel good. It's not only about uh, having multiple partners. Even there are women who don't uh, go well with family planning. And they would prefer using condom mm-hmm. as a family planning method. Mm-hmm. So I'm also happy about that. Yes. You, you told me you're the only one in Africa. Oh, the only do, one in Africa. Do you, do, do you do this in Africa alone, outside the country? Have yes. you been to other countries? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, you see, like, uh, here I went to South Africa. Uh-huh. And this, this I, I sponsored myself. I, I sometimes I feel good uh-huh. when I have some money. <laughs> just book myself to a flight and go to a place of my choice. Mm-hmm. I've gone to South Africa. I've gone to Rwanda. I sponsored myself. I can say, mm-hmm. and also the government chipped in something. Uh, and also my partners like LVCT supported me. The government sent me to Thailand. Mm-hmm. Uh, benchmarking on condom. What? 
Yes, so they do even benchmarking of. Uh, yes, 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 uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. I, I feel I'm. Uh, I was uh, sponsored by National AIDS Control Council. We are a team of people, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I was shocked to see that in Thailand mm -hmm. we have a condom king. In Thailand, the, the way the way Kenya, we we are proud of coffee tourism and tea. Thailand is sex tourism, mm -hmm. and the HIV prevalence in Thailand is zero. What? I'm telling you, there are less than 500,000 people with HIV in Thailand uh -huh. because they have done serious 100% condom uh, promotion. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they talk about condom. In Thailand, that is the only place that a sex worker can call a police officer that you're not using a condom and you'll be arrested. What? Yes. Uh -huh. There's a lot of sex activities and tourists Prains and prains run in Thailand for people uh -huh. to to enjoy and learn about sex. Exactly. Yes. Well, when you look at the, the kind of campaigns you do mm -hmm. and uh, the HIV prevalence uh, in the country, what do you think is the best way forward in terms of ensuring that we reduce the numbers as much as possible? People engaging uh, with sex is normal it have been there for long but uh, acquiring hiv is not right we have reduced the hiv prevalence in our country initially we used to have like seventy-eight thousand uh -huh. new hiv infection every year uh -huh. we have now reduced up to 50. Uh, we are now struggling with teenies uh -huh. between 18 and 24 years old who are now getting new HIV infection. Almost every day, like, uh, I don't know, I'm not very sure, like 40 to 50 young people get HIV every day. Mm -hmm. And I think together we can make a difference in this. What we need is uh, more HIV awareness, more sex education, more condom distribution points. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the government is trying to do on that. Mm -hmm. And we can have uh, more prince and uh, princess of condom in every county. <laughs> uh -huh. People who will help because I cannot be everywhere. Exactly. That's what I look forward to see. Uh -huh. That I can have more people doing what I'm doing. Not only in Kenya but in Africa. Uh -huh. So maybe hoping that this corona will go. I wish to have a, a king in Tanzania, a king in Rwanda, a king in other countries. And then we see whether together we can kick HIV out of Africa. Ah. Because my pain is out of the, the big population of the world, we, we are like 7 point something billion people. 70% mm -hmm. of all HIV infection are in Africa. How? Mm -hmm. You know that make me have sleepless night. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can see the population in China, the population in, in India, but majority is in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because we don't talk and express sex education and it is a taboo when people talk bad about sex and which was created by God and almost everybody is engaging to sex. But we don't tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I tell young people, what your mother didn't tell you, what your father didn't tell you, what your teachers didn't tell you, what your doctors can't tell you, I will tell you mm -hmm. without fear. And they'll tell you the truth. Tell them, they're listening. <laughs> the truth will set you true. <laughs> free from HIV. Uh -huh. If you understand yourself, if you understand the purpose of condom, if you, you know your sexuality and the remits, and you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. we, need, we, need, we need happy people. We need happy families, you know? Yes. Exactly. You, you, you see, every day we have a family that is mourning. They are going to hospital to take some because of HIV. We can't stop this. We can't. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every month I buy a book. Or at least when I'm through, I look for book. And even these hawkers, uh -huh. when they see any good book about sex, they call me. Uh -huh. They keep for me. Because this is what I really put in my head and then share with people. Exactly. Knowledge is power. Gone are the days when we used to preach abstinence. Uh, I think it is divided. Mm -hmm. There are people who preach abstinence. And uh, where are they? In church, mm -hmm. you get it. Be faithful. In church, condom, 
I'm left alone. <laughs> and I'm condemned. <laughs> and I'm called names. Uh-huh. But I'm telling people the truth. <laughs> I'm not the owner of condom. I don't get any money from this. Uh-huh. It's not a business to me. Uh-huh. It's not a business. Uh-huh. I just give people free information. What do they tell you? They call you names. <laughs> I remember there's a time I, I, I was consulted by a pastor mm-hmm. in, in uh, Abasanda. I was giving people condom and that guy called me. Then I thought I was so happy he, he, he needs condom. Then he the pastor? To- yes, then uh-huh. he told me straight. He, he did have the... I didn't know he was a pastor. Uh-huh. So he was on casual. Then he <sighs> told me straight to my face, you are a devil agent. Why are you giving people condom? Why are you encouraging people sex? I was like... If you carry an umbrella and it's not raining, <laughs> <laughs> is it a mistake? <laughs> Are you a legend of the devil? <laughs> no. <laughs> I felt embarrassed, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, he called me names, and then I told him, "No, let's have a cup of tea." You need to understand, mm-hmm. because I believe there are children who are born with HIV, and many right now they want to marry. They want to have their own life. It's not their mistake. Mm-hmm. It's, HIV is not only through sex. And also, HIV is not acquired by people, in quote, who, are not, who have multiple partners. For you to get HIV, it's just very simple. You are positive, you don't know. And this person doesn't know your status. And you ignore using condom and protecting yourself. So... HIV is very easy. Either you know or you don't know. If you know not protecting yourself, you acquire HIV. Exactly. So if, if we all understand that our personal risk of acquiring HIV, we cannot even distribute condom to anybody. Mm-hmm. People will be safe. But because my people perished because of lack of knowledge, we are here to give them the information. We are exactly. here to give them the condom. Not only the information, even the tools uh-huh. to protect themselves. Where do you get these condoms from? I get my condoms from the National AIDS Control Council, uh-huh. uh, NASCOP. For free? For free. Uh-huh. You walk to any hospital, any VCT center, you'll get condoms. Uh-huh. And I put them to public toilets. And uh, uh-huh. I feel good when I'm doing this. Exactly. Yes. So you told me that you, you target specific events and everything. There was one that did trends online. Yes. Were you in Naivasha? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I was in Naivasha. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that was the greatest time ever. Oh <laughs> my say God. So? <laughs> ever in my life, uh-huh. I've never given many condoms at once. Like I did in, in Naivasha. Uh-huh. No. Uh-huh. I've gone to Machakos 7. Uh-huh. I gave condom. And there were not many. I've gone to cultural event like uh, Rusinga Island. Mm-hmm. I, I I go to those cultural events, football. I go to sports events. Uh-huh. Let's say I go to workplaces, but I've never given many condom like I gave in Naivasha. Mm-hmm. And to be specific, uh-huh. people demanded the condoms. Uh-huh. Yes. How many did you give? I gave three trucks of condom pickups. Uh-huh. I, I was supported by AHF, uh, NASCOP and uh, LV City Health and Naivasha Sub-County Hospital. Uh-huh. We were a team. And Red Cross. Three something. trucks. We gave out three trucks. Three pickups, I'm telling you. Uh-huh. Full of condoms. 120,000 condoms within three days. What? And... The Kenyans are very active. They, they are active. And now they also recognize that condom can make a difference in their life. Mm-hmm. You get it? And uh, they celebrated me. I'm telling you, when I I followed the Safari Rari route, mm-hmm. and there were so many people, when they saw condom, they heckled, they called, they, it was, I felt, oh my God. I didn't, I didn't believe. I was shocked myself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. What are the common misconceptions you find about condom? Uh, there's a lot of misconception about condom. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Number one, the brand. Mm-hmm. There are very few people who can differentiate the type of condom they are using. You can ask people, did you use condom last time? Yes. Which one? I don't know. 
Yeah, and you are they, they don't know. So Kenya, they are not people of brand. They just want condom. Number one, there was that misconception that government condom because they are free. They are not. They are not uh, as effective. They are not effective. Mm-hmm. But nowadays they have seen their good and their quality because even the government, and I like this through the NASCOP, they have even. Uh, brought dotted condom. We are the only African country that give citizen free dotted condom like a rough rider. Mm-hmm. The sure condom is dotted and is well packed. So maybe I wish the government will go to another level and make it flavor. Good. Uh, that is one. Mm-hmm. The other thing is like uh, condom is not sweet. Mm-hmm. The sweetness of sex is in our mind. It's not <laughs> where you insert condom. Uh-huh. It's in our mind. Mm-hmm. So if people can be able to disconnect the sweetness of condom, the sweetness of sex and condom, they can use condom perfectly. Mm-hmm. That is another thing. That uh, there's a group of people, and uh, I wish the government can take action on these people, who go to the street and they demonstrate that when you use condom, they put condom, they put eggs, they put... Uh, Salt, they put things, then the condom bursts. Then they tell people that this condom is not uh, effective. Uh-huh. And those people, they keep on giving people long information that when you use condom, you start having problems, I don't know, with your kidneys. They are, they are, they are not connected. Mm-hmm. They give wrong information. And I don't think uh, we, we need to give the right information. About mm-hmm. it. Yes. Other people feel that the size of condom is not, it's very, it's very small or it's very big. But I believe that uh, at this juncture we need to introduce a small size condom because we have a lot of young people who are engaging to sex and maybe even if condom is elastic, we need to have a, a, a nice size for these young people. Not because we're encouraging them to have sex, to be sincere, they are having Mm-hmm. If we check the data from the UNFPA, last year but one, we had more than 178,000 teenies who are pregnant between age of 10, 10 years and 19. Who mm-hmm. are they having sex with? How did they come become pregnant? And mm-hmm. that we are denying sex education to young people who are getting pregnant every year. Mm-hmm. Every time we are doing our final exams, the media is there showing this young girl is having an uh, exam in hospital giving birth. Mm. Why can't we help those young people mm-hmm. with the right tools? Mm-hmm. Yes. The truth is that it's happening. The truth, it is happening. Mm. Why can't we look for that solution? Exactly. Why can't we go ahead of these young people? Mm-hmm. Yes. There's this other misconception that if if you use two, you are extra safe. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you use two. Uh-huh. Uh, we have male and female condom, and some people we give them information. If it is male condom, don't use female condom. If it's female condom, don't use male condom. The other people want to be double sure. Sure, mm. they put the first condom, the second condom. The risk is the friction. The first condom will be will have friction with the second one because of lubrication, and it will be left inside the woman. And the second condom will get out. The, that the condom will slip off, mm-hmm. not bursting. It will not burst, but it will slip off because of mm. uh, lubrication and the friction. For condom, the first thing you do, you check the expiring date from here. This condom will expire uh, in 2024 on August. You need to check before you engage yourself in your activity. Maybe when you're in that mood, you are drunk, you, you check, you have taken one or two beers, you cannot see the expiring date. Cut condom from the top where we have rinds. Cut the condoms from that side. This is, condom have inside and outside, just like your socks have inside and outside. So you need to check the inside and the condom when the rights are on. Pitch the, the tip, the condom, hold the condom on top of an erect condom, a penis, roll down, roll down, roll down, 
smoothly, 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 and there you are. This is how to put on on condom. Then, when you are doing penetration, make sure your partner is well prepared, is wet. If your partner is not wet enough, we encourage people to use what we call lubricant to stop condom burst. And for lubricant, you just put on top all you paste around your partners. Then you are safe. If your partner, and I'm saying, if your partner is not well lubricated, you can add a lubricant on top. To remove a condom, I tell people depending on where you are. Right now we are in my office. To remove condom, use a tissue paper. Don't use condom with your bare hand. You can use a, 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 used, a, a report. Get a paper. Get a tissue paper. Rolled condom. When you are holding it with a paper, with a newspaper, with a tissue, and you put the evidence together. Burn. <laughs> put in a bin. Burn or bury. This is a female condom. It has two rings. One outside permanent and the one uh, which is very flexible. This condom is, the ring is used to help to insert the condom inside the woman. And I'm going to demonstrate. And also after that, the ring inside is going to help to add more value when you're making love because it's going to touch the many nerves around the, the, the woman has about 8,000 nerves. A male has 4,000 nerves around the male organ. And it's very important to know about that. You squeeze the, the ring together and assuming uh, this is a dummy and I'm very happy because I'm the one who designed and developed this dummy. You insert inside the vagina in a very soft way without stress. You put the ring inside and then that's the first step. Then you use one finger. You push the ring deeper, deeper, deeper. And I'm putting deeper. You don't expect this ring to get out from the other side, but it's just holding inside the, the woman. And this is the position. When you put a female condom, this is the position. Men, you don't need to put on a condom at that time. You give time for this condom to get the warmth of the woman and also to stick around the body. So give it time. And I'm not giving you specific time because some people can just be there with their time. Ten minutes to go, two minutes, no. You don't need to count, but with the activity, you are taking your tea, you are, you are talking, it will take the warmth. Up about seven to 15 minutes to be, to be specific. So you use it before, before you start the whole... Yes, before. This is not like a man condom that you, you put it on and then you jump. No, you put, you wait for, for it to take shape for it to get the warmth and to stick to the walls. Now, the man needs to be, to be directed. Some men in a hurry, like buses, they can come and pass through. We call it bypass. They, they pass through bypass. But they're supposed to go through the superhighway. You know, that, that's the, the direction. <laughs> and that, that is the line. Then after, after, after ejaculation, this condom is very comfortable because you can stay longer. You remove. You roll it three times, one, two, three. Then you pull. You hold the first ring and the second ring. Again, use a, where you are, a newspaper, a tissue, a serviette. Hold, get the paper, put them together. Put your condom, put in a pin, in a bin, or, or you go and bury, or you burn. We call it 3B of using condom. There's a time an old man was demonstrated how to use condom. And the, the person who did that used the fingers. You go and put condom, demonstrated with the fingers. And that old man seriously put the condom on the fingers, <laughs> hold them like that, and started doing his action. <laughs> so we need to face things. <laughs> so me, I like to be real because <laughs> the education level matters. Now this is serious. <laughs> we need to face. <laughs> Uh -huh. The things are, yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to talk the truth, and the truth will set us free. Exactly. I would feel good, 
when I see a happy young generation without mm -hmm. children crying that my father died, we don't have orphans, we don't have children going to see their sick dad and mom because of HIV. I think this this will make me very happy when I, that time comes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's it's something you're willing to walk the talk to the very. Oh, end. my friend, I'm mm -hmm. not retiring. <laughs> Anytime soon. <laughs> Anytime soon, and um, I'm not stopping this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Either I'm funded or not funded, I'm not stopping. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are I'm you funded? I'm not funded. It's just out of sheer goodwill and passion. It's passion. Is is being part of uh, uh, helping the community to solve their own problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. Keep doing what you do? Yeah, well, sure. Uh -huh. I can say I've, I have said that I've benefited because... When you're happy, when you f see good things happening, even God give you some good rewards here and there. Uh -huh. You're not sick. You know, like, there, there are good benefits of, uh, of being good to the society. Exactly. You, you are paid in direct, not in terms of cash. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Speak to them, finally. This, wow. this active generation. Together, we can make and we can stop new HIV infections. Let's join hands, let's be happy, and let's talk the truth about HIV and sex education. It's very important. Uh -huh. We miss that as a continent, not yes. as a country. Mm -hmm. So it's not only Kenya that you are having this problem. South Africa is more hit mm -hmm. than we are doing. So as we are talking about Kenya and sex education, look even all, what other countries are doing, and we are better we are ahead, we are doing a lot. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of partners that are, are doing. If you have any information, you want to know something about HIV, there's NASCOP, there's NAC, there's LVCT, another organization that you can call and get information. There's a free toll. I, I keep on telling people, you can call 1190 for HIV information. Mm -hmm. You can call, uh, in case of rape, you can call 11992. Mm -hmm. You get information. There are free toll numbers that mm -hmm. people can call and people can know. And, and finally, I can say, we have three things that are happening. If you use your ARVs well, if you're already positive, you can live longer, good life, and guess what? You cannot infect anybody. Mm -hmm. We have what we call U equals U. If your virus is not detected in your body, you cannot transmit to anybody. That is good news because already the government is giving more than one million people uh, ARVs. Mm -hmm. And those people, they are living better and they are out. Mm -hmm. Number two, in case of unprotected sex, in case of rape, in case of an incident that you feel will put you at risk, we have what we call PEP. These are medication that you take within 72 hours, and you cannot get HIV. Mm -hmm. And you take that medication faithfully for 28 days. You will, you can stop from getting HIV. Mm -hmm. Number three, we have PrEP. If you feel you cannot stop multiple partners, you are here, you are there, you don't use condom, come to any uh, government hospital, request for PrEP. This is a medication you take every day, either you're having sex or not, and it can protect you from acquiring HIV. You take every day for how long? As far as you, your behavior or you are at uh -huh. risk. For instance, let me put it very clear. Your partner is HIV positive and you're HIV negative. You can take that PrEP to protect you from acquiring HIV from your friend. Uh -huh. And it has been proved. So this, this work, you're doing it because it has good results. So, for instance, for now, we have condom, we have PrEP, we have PEP, you get it? Mm -hmm. And we have ARVs at some of the things that can stop mm -hmm. HIV to occur. So, the big one is the behavior change, exactly. where people will go talk, you go to church, and we are combining this HIV information with the spiritual, financial, uh, health awareness, all those things, so mm -hmm. as we can come to a better place. Exactly. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Am I getting my pack? Yo, sure, 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 sure. Off the camera. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it was a session and a half. <laughs>